Well, you may have heard by now, but Jameis Winston will play in the Rose Bowl after all. Until this weekend, his status was still in question. Last year's Heisman winner and national champion faced a court hearing after a woman accused him of raping her two years ago. But while this allegation is the most serious in nature, it's hardly the first brush with the law for Winston. During his freshman year, campus police put Winston in handcuffs after witnesses reported he was shooting at squirrels with pellet guns. Just a few hours later, after being released the first time, that same day, Winston and a friend go back to their apartment house and reportedly shoot the place up with those same pellet guns, resulting in over $4,000 worth of damage. Seems mischievous and destructive, maybe, but not a crime, at least in the end. Apartment management decided not to press charges after someone from FSU's athletic department stopped by and promised the players would pay for the damage on their own. Two weeks later, those rape allegations surfaced. Florida State Attorney Willie Meggs ruled there was not enough evidence to file criminal charges. But that wasn't enough to satisfy the feds. The Department of Education launched their own federal investigation, trying to determine if FSU dodged their responsibilities and perhaps covered for their star athlete. After a year and a half of the feds breathing down their neck, Florida State Administration finally gave in and agreed to launch their own internal investigation. During that span, Winston still managed to run into issues with police. Seven months after those rape charges, an employee from a Tallahassee Burger King calls the police, saying Winston stole, stole soda from the machine. Not exactly grand larceny, but not good publicity either, especially not for a Heisman candidate quarterback. Then, earlier this year, a local supermarket calls the police after Winston walked out of the store without paying for crab legs that cost $32. FSU wound up suspending the Heisman winner at that time from the baseball team. Winston apologizes, sort of. He says he forgot to pay for the crab legs. Then, in the code of conduct hearing, the same one the Department of Education demanded FSU should hold, Winston doesn't even show up. And it's all okay because FSU officials say they can't force him to attend. And Winston's lawyer says he was never told he had to be there. Had Winston been in that hearing, he would have had to answer some tough questions under oath. But that never happened. Not once during this entire string of events up to this point has Jamie Winston's, uh, James Winston stood up and said, I admit I was wrong. He never said he broke the rules. He never took responsibility for his actions in every single event up to that point. Winston dodges the rules and evades the consequences. Four months later, the same man accused of raping a woman and by far the most popular student on campus stands up on a table in a room full of other students and screams a sexual remark filled with vulgarity, likely some sort of prank. Because video evidence showed up online, FSU was forced to respond, once again covering for Winston. For the first time in his college football career, though, Winston was reprimanded. With a slap on the wrist, maybe half a game he was supposed to set out against Clemson. But after a public outcry, the interim president at the time, Garnett Stokes, reluctantly decided to extend Winston's suspension to the entire game. Florida State still won. Since then, Winston has been accused of selling autographs illegally. But FSU officials once again step in, say there is no evidence that he was paid for those autographs, so they say his eligibility will not be jeopardized. You'll start to notice a trend. All along, Jameis Winston's top defense attorney is Florida State. And why not? Essentially, they're the only ones with skin in the game. Jameis Winston will get paid the same amount if he plays or if he doesn't, even in this latest hearing. Florida State had everything to gain, while Winston had essentially nothing to lose. It's no surprise that Florida State President John Thrasher, who used to be a chief justice on Florida's Supreme Court himself, applauded the Supreme Court decision to clear Winston's name. He knows what it means for the school's bottom lines, after all. In a controversial move, the Board of Trustees actually appointed Thrasher as the new president of FSU just this last September, during the controversy of Winston, and they gave him a hefty $430,000 base salary, and that doesn't count any additional benefits or fundraising bonuses. But you'll know that money has never been a problem for Thrasher. He's always known how to find it. Or rather, it's always known how to find him. Board of Trustees Chairman Alan Bentz spelled it out very clearly when he announced Thrasher would take over. In his press conference, he said, I think he has the skills, and it's not all about money, but money is the big thing.